Hey, welcome back to Life for Living Well. My name is Richard and we continue from our ongoing series of an art of balance. I've mentioned four areas that we needed to work on to maintain balance or achieve balance in our life. We might not achieve this forever, but most of the time, if we're able to achieve this, we will be able to bring more good stuff to our life. And out of balance, I've listed four areas that I wanted to address through this podcast. So this is part two of the ongoing series of our podcast, and out of balance means self-awareness. How do we use self-awareness to achieve balance in our life? Last week, I present to you all how to use the self-care, which is the least of the four that I've listed in the beginning of this podcast, which are self-awareness, self-worth, and self-esteem. But for this particular topic for this week, I will be looking into several awareness. Several awareness is very deep and very big uh, topic to tackle on the superficial levels without putting a bit of thought and research into it. I'm going to just present this on two particular areas in the area of thinking and the area of feelings which are our emotions area of thinking is more area of our intellect habit and compulsive and i'm not talking to you as an expert in this field i'm talking to you as someone that Using based on my own personal opinion about this particular issue and based on the other people's work that I've listened, I've read, I've observed people in the real life, in my own life, and I've have used several aware and I've have developed my own several aware to the point that uh, is helping my own life to be more intentional with my action, with my thinking, with my deed. And that's the reason why I want to tackle this area of out of balance. Unfortunately, many people think and thought they are self-aware, but research have shown that barely eight to ten percent of us are actually self-aware, and that is why we have so many issues in our political affairs, in our economic affairs, as a nation, as individual, from the home, from siblings, and because uh, the most artful people is unconscious people. We see ourselves one way, but people in our close cycle may see us in different way. If we die to ask, if we die to ask them, will be shocked and surprised what they truly see. But most of the people we surround ourselves with, they want us to be happy. They tend to save the bad news away from us. So meaning they protect our feelings. They don't truly want to tell us how they perceive us or how they see us and how we see ourselves. A Chinese Asian philosopher wise man once said to master someone else is a strength to master yourself is a true power so self-awareness is able to go inward to know yourself in a personal way like you know your close friends like you know your partner like you know your husband or your wife like you know your children you get to do this thing like you know your work uh you get to have to go inside of yourself to develop a kind of relationship that you haven't experienced before 
And until you do this, you begin to watch your own actions and your own behavior like you're watching a film. Albert Einstein once said that you cannot solve a problem with the same consciousness that created it. So if you have a mindset that being rich is a sin, you will need to change this mindset before you're able to create wealth in your life. If you have a mindset that being alone means you're unloving, you will need to change this mindset before you appear lovable to people around you. So this is what self-awareness will do for you. It will be able to allow you to see yourself in, in real, in natural the way you are, rather than the way you want it to be. Most people create a lot of image for themselves and they lost in this image at one point because either they're trying to please somebody or they're trying to let people to accept them. And if you build your values on intrinsic things like status, like your, your job, like your beauty, you bound to attract all kind of people into your life that cement or complement the idea of yourself. But when you go inward of yourself and you have a healthy self-awareness, once it will begin to happen in your life, you're able to separate illusion from the reality. So for this particular podcast, I just want to focus on two things. How you can, when we don't use self-awareness, what impact it happen in our life. And when we use self-awareness, what benefit that will happen in our life. So number one that I wanted to talk about if we use our awareness is our thinking, thinking, which generate our habit and our compulsive pattern of behavior. The second one is feelings, which is more to do with our emotions. And when we don't have adequate or etious awareness, we bound to use our emotions as a signal to act rather than signal to gauge and measure what is going on. The way I say emotion sometimes, I say like a traffic light. So it gives you amber light, it gives you green light, gives you red light. And each of those lights symbolize something. But not necessarily you have to take action when the amber light is on. Not necessarily you have to take any, only action you have to take when the red light is on is to stop. And, and this is how I'm going to break this down. Uh, for example, I once met a, a lady a few years ago. And I remember that I asked her. Actually, I met two, two ladies and I, in different times. And I asked them the same question for different uh, scenarios. The first one that I asked, I asked her, I remember I asked her when uh, the first week I met her, she very bubbling, energetic, friendly, very positive. And I asked her, I said, how do you solve a problem when there is a conflict between you and your friends? And then she said quickly, she said, well, I just had a dialogue with my friend or I just talked to them and that's it and we finish it. So three weeks later, she was involved in a uh, public display of aggression with another group of friends that she has because she felt like she's been disrespected by their behavior by not giving her attention or ignore her when they went to for activities outside. So two of his friends, two of her friends, sorry, two of her friends decided to give attention to themselves. So she couldn't really control them not to do that. So she started acting out by showing them anger and irritation. And all the things that's already happened in the past between her and their other friend, everything just come out. And then she she just 
re reacting by screaming in the car. So I was there. I look at her. I said, this is the person that told me that this is how she solved a problem. How does she just bullying people by using an emotion and anger to control their behavior? So I, I look at her. I said, do you realize that you are screaming in the public? And everybody is watching us. So, and she keeps saying, I wasn't screaming. I wasn't shouting. And But she continued to shout. She continued to shout. So, I, me and the other people, we just, I, I walk her into a place to talk. And I said, what is the matter? And then she came out with things that happened two years ago between one of the other friends. And I thought to myself, what does that have to do with what is happening right now? So to call the, what I'm trying to say is that she thought that she knows herself, but she didn't. So she put up uh, a lot of resentment, was down there, and everything come out in the wrong place. So picking a fighting with the wrong person because of all these emotions that she wasn't aware that she was there. She wasn't aware of herself. To the point that when she's angry, she has be capable to use aggression. And that's number one. And another person is, I asked another person. So this one, I went to a date with a lady and I asked her, how do you solve a problem when you are in a relationship? And, and I think that was about the third date that we went. And then she said, oh, I don't do relationship. So I ended it. Uh, no, few few days later, I ended it. So I asked to myself, I said, that is why all the story that I've been told that all the guys that dating is because something's wrong with them. And what I'm trying to say is to you is that when people don't, aware of themselves they have capacity to hurt themselves and hurt the people that they truly care about when people lack awareness of themselves they have capacity to sabotaging themselves rather than being a relationship that doesn't that is not a right relationship for them they just feel like oh we went to the same school we should be together or oh, we are doing the same or be together, we should be together. Rather than say, what did I need in relationship? Does this individual are able to support me with this need in relationship? They just feel like with time they will change. So what are the benefits of self-awareness? When we have a IT and adequate self-awareness, there is no way something else will change in our life. We will begin to have more self-acceptance. When you're able to accept your own weaknesses and your own strength, then you are bound to reach another level as a woman being where you are able to become a creator of your own experiences. You begin to attract the right people into your life. You begin to understand that you have power and influence of what happened to you, not how it happened to you. So you're reluctant to put on masks because we live in a society where whether you like it or not, a way everyone wants you to be certain way. Your parents, your partner, your children, your friends, your job, the society, all of them want you to be certain way. But self-awareness will allow you to walk toward your authenticity and to your true self. So you no longer needed to wear a mask to let people like you. Because when you show who you truly are, the right person or the right business or the right kind of people that are supposed to be in your life will be in your life. Uh, one, someone once said, I don't actually know who said this word, but I remember, I'm not sure if I quoted it really well. Someone once said that, People that mind what you do, they are not the people that you are mind to be with. And somebody that is not mind what you do is somebody that you mind to be with. 
But when we are lie to ourselves, we also lie to people that come to us and then we are bound to attract people that lie to us in return. And this is where self-awareness is key. When we know our self, what we think, what we feel, we begin to become more assertive, articulate about our needs, our space, and our energy. So, more. We are good to find fault and mistakes of other, which is intelligent, but don't do well, holding ourselves responsible for the role we play in our circumstances. Yes, we when we have a when we have a ethics of awareness, we don't longer assign role of blame to our parent anymore. I see meet a lot of adults that they blame their parents for every little thing that happened in their life. Even them not performing well at work, they blame their parents for that. Even them become abusive in their relationship, they blame their parents for that. But the awareness is you become abusive and you did not want to be like this. The best you could do is to seek for the help. Seek for somebody in the professional area that can help you reshaping your behavior you cannot truly change who you truly are as a person because you are who you are but you can change your behavior some of us have developed a behavior that become toxic it become pattern i once have uh yeah people doing the same thing and the only thing they say they say oh it's because i'm a man it's because i'm a woman no, it's because you form an habit and behavior that suits the gender you wanted to project it. And that is why this behavior hurting you and hurting other people. Our society today, we blame, we want our politicians to be certain way. And when they go around badly, we blame them. We don't really want to take any responsibility for the role that we play in it. We got to have to blame somebody for how things are thing up in our life. Self-awareness is a powerful shift that help our life became balanced and create more powerful and positive outcomes. Two areas I don't like to emphasize. Self-awareness first, thinking. Let's take, let's take let's consider area of thinking with this self awareness. Some of us are perpetual thinker. We stay in our head. We think that all our problems can be solved by intellect. We no longer listen to our intuition anymore. We continue to do something by analyzing other people' negative behavior, and we condemn them to certain way. We all know two or more people always on their head. S sometimes speak out when alone without aware. So you walk around and you see people talking to themselves. You don't even know what is what they are saying. They don't even aware that they are lost talking by themselves. I do do it sometimes. I do it sometimes in my in my flat, and I will be talking to my. I don't even realize it. Until one day, a friend of mine stay over and he heard me talking to myself. I said, Richard, you talk to yourself. And I said, yes, I do, because I'm aware of it. So because I'm aware of it, I tend to catch myself like taking a deep breath every 10 minutes to just feel what I'm feeling in my body rather than being in my head. Using intellect to distract themselves. So one of the things where we use thinking a lot is to distract ourselves from the moment. We do not like to feel what we're feeling. Some people don't even know what they feel. So we use our intellect to be like a something that entertains our illusions or dreaming. And we're able to visualize compulsively in order to take us away from right now so at the end of the day 
it becomes some sort of an addition that we use all the time to coping with life challenges. But in truly, if we wanted to access a deep wisdom through intuition, we need to learn how to be quiet our thinking, how to be connecting with our body and our soul and our mind, but with a silent and quiet. Okay, the last part of self-awareness that I'm talking about this particular podcast is feelings. When we lack keen self-awareness in this area, we bound to create chaos in our life and our relationship. This is the most area that I've seen when people's emotions have control over them. I've seen people that that damage and destroy a relationship that will have become a potential. I've seen people that are unable to control their emotion. They join the group and the group collapse because of the chaos they created based on their uncontrolled emotions or emotions that have affecting or influencing how they act. When you feel anger, so the best thing you do, you go out, take a night, and then you stop someone. This is not acceptable. This is unnecessary. You put other people's life into danger and your own life. Unable to identify what we feel, naming it without judgment or always reacting to it, which bring more pains. Many people suppress their feelings to control their behaviors. So the one that is more is that someone feel anxiety. Let's say someone feel anxiety and worry. And what they do, they start calling that person constantly because they are strong need to be known. But What's actually going on is because they lack control and unable to sit uncomfortable with uncomfortable emotions. So they wanted to stop it. So they have no aware of it. They think that the other person made them feel like that. Nobody can make you feel anything because your emotion is something inside of you, not outside of you. So things outside of you might trigger it, but they are not the root cause of your feelings. Feeling emptiness, but managing it or engage in self-destructive habits or actions. Feeling anxious and weary, but decided to want to control others because of their actions. Having self-awareness on these two paradigms, thinking and feelings, would improve our well-being tremendously and lead a well-balanced life road to get there are not going to be easy but is doable by taking small step one at a time lazo once said a thousand journeys start by a step finally you will develop a self acceptance which increase and support your self-awareness so if we prioritize self-awareness in these two areas alone there's so many areas where you can use self-awareness particularly in thinking and feelings these two areas if we're able to manage it well we can begin to see a massive positive change to our webbing and make us more a balanced person one area that is helpful when you come to self-awareness is to allow to practice introspection if it's only 10 minutes a day it will make a difference in you for a long time have a small diary to write what did you do best today and why what could you have done best today and why without making a judgment about it to yourself when you write, it's not only 
make it easier for you, it's also therapeutic for you. And you begin to be on top of how you treat yourself is how you treat other people. If you don't love all yourself, you cannot love other people. If you love yourself, you're able to love other people. The second one that I would suggest to develop your self-awareness is to make it as a ritual in your life to spend at least 10 to 20 minutes every day in the day. If you don't have 10 to 20 minutes to yourself alone, then you have no life. To spend 10 minutes to 20 minutes to just sit still and just listen. The world is full of noise. If you can quiet your mind, the world, the universe is under your feet. That's what it lasts to say. I hope this particular podcast helps someone today. And I hope that if you manage to develop your self-awareness into HUL, it's not only going to improve your life, it will improve everyone that have contact into your life. Your relationship will change. You will attract people that value you. I once told a friend recently when he was uh when he was feel upset about one of his friends treated him, I said that imagine you are a shopkeeper and you have different types of brand of items in your shop. You have a silver, you have a diamond, and you have a gold. And you have different price for them, but you don't know how much they worth. Because somebody bought it in the shop, you're just in the shop to manage it. And somebody walk into your shop that know in their mind what they wanted to pay for your each item. And they offer you a price of silver for diamond and you take it. Is it that person's fault or your responsibility? And he said his own responsibility. And then he shook his head. This is self-awareness. When you know your worth, nobody can devalue you. When you know what you want, nobody can devalue you. So when people become an obstacle in your life, obstacle will no longer be an obstacle. It will actually become a, a way. You will use the opportunity of challenges and trouble to grow in your own way. So I hope this particular podcast helps someone. And if you want to write to me, uh, write to me to info at lifeforlivingway.info. My name is Richard, and I hope this particular episode of Out of Balance helps someone. So the next week, I'm hoping to release part three of it, which is more to do with uh, self-esteem. And once we're able to do this, we begin to see a lot of changes in our life, in our mental mental capability in our emotional in our physical in our financial rest, financial well-being and all these things we make a difference in our life as well thank you for listening to me uh, have a wonderful week thank you